Hello and welcome once again, gorgeous people, to We've Got No Idea What We're Going to Say with Ben Simmons and Nick Murphy. We're back for more fun and frivolity. Frivolity. (laughs) Great start to the show. (laughs) It's been two weeks since the last time and you still haven't got any better at saying words that begin with FR. (laughs) Frig (laughs) off. Well, here we are again. We've literally got no idea what we're going to say. We're live on Ignite Radio. And I think it's fortunate to say we haven't had any technical difficulties like we did last time. No, I think we were a bit more prepared than normal this time. I think we feel very, very prepared right now, and I'm happy about it. Also, I think the fault was Nicole C last time. Yeah, but she's already told me she's probably not listening tonight, so I don't care about (laughs) slagging her off. What a useless woman. I wasn't going to slag her off. Well, actually, I was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brilliant. No, we love was, you, Nicole. It, it was great last time. It's always nice to have guests, but I think it's fair to say we don't have guests tonight. It's just back to the dream team. Just you and me stuck in a small room in London, With very no close to each other. On. <laughs> there are some things you don't have to admit on the radio, but that that... we're in a small room. <laughs> don't admit it. This I'm is a really massive sorry. room. I don't know why I gave that away. <laughs> um, as ever, good people of London, there are a multitude of ways you can get involved and make this a fully interactive show, and that's what we'd like you to do. Yeah. So um, feel free to, uh, if you want to go crazy and use our website, we do have uh, a website, www.wgni.co.uk, uh, and we do have an email address, info at wgni.co.uk. The WGNI stands for We've Got No Idea. We didn't go all the way through for what we're going to say, obviously. Um, we're on Facebook, WGNI. Search for us on there and send us messages. And uh, we are also on Twitter. You can tweet us at WGNI Radio. So all those ways you can get involved and get mentioned live on our show because the show would be nothing without you. There's Actually, lots of the... ways. There's lots of ways to get in touch. I know there are, but the show would be nothing without you, except it probably still would be something, because we would do it if nobody it was would listening. Be, there would be something, but it wouldn't be as good. <laughs> there is definitely, definitely that, and it's definitely I'd definitely like to true. think of you all as in this small room without wearing any clothes on. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like to think of it, but, you know, if I'm forced to, I'm going to, so... <laughs> Um, how are you feeling, Nick? Because I know you don't cope well with hot weather and there's been quite a prolonged period of hot weather. It's been a bloody night. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Hot weather is rubbish. It's actually, it needs to go away now. Well, it kind of has today because it's been bucketing in down. Bucketing in down. You're bucketing down. You <laughs> can't say words that begin with FR. <laughs> I can't say words that end in ING. Well, is... it's been pretty bad, yes, but yeah. um, I think it's still quite warm. I'm feeling... Moist right now. I remember the last time we recorded one of these in your small room. Uh, <laughs> it was quite it's warm large. back there. <laughs> this large and small so room. Is my room. <laughs> right, well, I think we've had our first few messages in. Well, I think we need to find out who the heck they're from. We've got to say a very big hello to uh, a good friend of mine, a fellow performer. She played the snake in the Jungle Book. Hello to Maddie Cole. Maddie Cole, good to have you listening. Uh, a fellow uh, resident of... Oh, I, I could be wrong if I say this, but I'm pretty sure she's a fellow resident of Essex. Really? Yes. You, when you say fellow resident, you're talking about me there, because you're in London. <laughs> yeah, I don't live in Essex. No. <laughs> a fellow resident, uh, resident of Essex to you. Do you want to be more specific as to where I'm Maddie sure Cole actually lives? I'm pretty sure she's from but uh, yes, Essex. Yeah, I'm hoping Basildon is right, but she could um, be... She could get very upset about it. What part did she play in The Jungle Book? She played many different parts. She played the mother wolf. She played Car the snake. Uh, Did you play any other parts, Maddie? I can't remember now. Ah, she's oh, just South said she's End. From South End, not Yeah, Basildon. she actually has spelt it South End. I was saying it phonetically like you've typed it in there, Maddie, so thanks for that. Uh, but good to have you listening. I have lived in uh, two parts of Essex now. I've listened. That's right. I've listened. <laughs> well, I listen a lot because I'm not deaf, um, but I've been in Basildon and I'm also currently living near Brentwood. So uh, Apparently Brentwood's a posh area of Essex, is that right, Maddie? You, you seem to doubt that, Nick, as if, yes. why would I be living there? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm slightly upset by that insinuation, but, you know, it is quite a nice area. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, that's exciting for everyone to know. Has anybody else got in touch with the show? Just, she's said one thing, Towie, which I presume is the only way is Essex. So I think that's what she says about Brent, Brentwood. Brent, don't say Brentford. Brentford. That's the Is other that side of London. That's Where's Western. Brentford? It's not all that far from sort of Twickenham Hounslow area. It's a very it? different side of London to where you live. It's completely different. <laughs> and also, I don't live in London, so, you know, it's not the same, is it? Ah. Um, 
Uh, we have had another regular listener to the show. Get in touch via our Twitter page, at WGNI Radio. Uh, Adam Ralph has yes. got in touch and said, do you play music or do we have to listen to you talk all <laughs> evening? Uh, no, we do, t- we do uh, play some music. We do play some music, Adam. Not a multitude of music, but enough to keep you satisfied. That's the hope. Um, <laughs> and as of last uh, broadcast, which was a fortnight ago, we've gone completely crazy. We used to play random songs and have a playlist and we didn't know what was going to turn up. But now... Now, as of last time and this time, we've prepared some music for we your have. lovely ears so, yeah, we, to listen to. We've quite so often we've played completely random music that basically I didn't really like. <laughs> so we've now <laughs> gone for now, but we've gone for a theme with this music today, haven't yes. we? We always play three songs during the course of the hour that we're with you. That's right. And uh, last time we went for kind of songs that just meant a lot to us and songs we really liked or were kind of important to us as we were yep. in our formative years. Today, we've gone for... Well, how would you describe the theme, really? Kind of... Songs that um, a kind of people wouldn't expect... Well, generally wouldn't like, but we're, we're sort of admitting that we quite sort of like guilty them. guilty pleasure songs. Guilty really, pleasures suppose. is a much better way of saying the complete nonsense I was spouting. I suspect there's a lot of people listening to this right now going, Nick Murphy and Ben Simmons, yeah... They're guilty pleasures. We like them, but we don't admit it. I don't think anyone would would say pleasures. I think they just said Nick Murphy, Ben Simmons, guilty. There's a lot of magistrates out there who said that before. So there you go. Um, I think Adam Ralph has sent us another tweet when calling us. Oh, legend. did he send us tweets? That's why I was trying to wonder where, where you'd read this amazing message from Adam Ralph. I actually didn't know where, but he yeah. tweeted us. Yeah, he's he's now following us on. I'm is proud that, to is say, is that our first tweet? Certainly, our first tweet in a long time that we've received. <laughs> no, of course we are inundated with <laughs> tweets every hour. I don't People know what don't you're talking about. Us. We have 44 followers. Please follow us. On Adam Twitter. also said he wasn't sure about our intro music. Yeah, but oh, in that case, he's wrong. It's absolutely awesome because <laughs> I came up with our intro music. So if you did, although I forced you to edit it because of the weird <laughs> sound effects you added at the end. Adam, if you're insulting our intro music, indirectly you're insulting me, and also you're completely right. <laughs> But I'm not changing it in no. a weird way. I kind of like it. Um, I forgot to say, when you are uh, trying to get in touch with the show, if you are fortunate enough to have either my, myself or Nick Murphy's mobile number, feel free to text us abusive messages or messages of love, mm. um, and we will read those out as well. But we're not giving our numbers out on the air. That would be crazy, wouldn't it, Nick? Yes, I'm not giving my number out. You give my number out, and I'll give yours <laughs> Yeah, out. that's much better. <laughs> um so I mentioned uh, current events and the hot weather and stuff like that. How do you feel about England retaining the Ashes today, which is something that they've done? Has that it? happened today? Yeah, the cricket, which I know oh, the cricket. you don't follow in any way whatsoever, so you must be proud. Someone said to me the other day that cricket was the most interesting thing that they could imagine, and I was like, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, to me, when people criticise chess as being uninteresting to watch I think of cricket now I have watched it live once I went to the Oval with uh, Ewan Shears who might even be listening in to this show Okay. Uh, if you are messages that Ewan I went live to the Oval to listen to some cricket uh, to listen to some cricket to watch some <laughs> cricket but I'll really tell you the only reason I went there was because it was free to get in after I think four o'clock we were working nearby and we took a lot of beer with us so mm. I just went and got drunk I can remember when I was at university in Leeds, obviously Headingley Cricket Ground was quite close to the student community, and um, we went to watch a test match there. I can't, that might have been an Ashes test match, it might have been England-Australia, and we took a lot of beer with us. And I think it's fair to say a lot of people that watch cricket drink beer. Because well, that, that's alco- probably why people enjoy it then. Alcohol's the only way to get through the long, monotonous days without being <laughs> able to see very much. <laughs> Definitely. Cricket is one of those sports. And I did play cricket at school. I have enjoyed playing it. Um, I kind of enjoy watching it, but it's definitely better to watch on the telly than in the ground. Yeah, and that, but I wouldn't mind sort of seeing highlights because you think well, you know that something's good going to happen. Yeah. Someone's going to yeah. sort of smash the wickets or make <clears> a catch. But there can there'll be long periods of cricket where nothing happens. <laughs> I'm I'm concerned that um, friend to the show Adam Ralph has messaged again, right? And said uh, I think I may be your only listener, and I'm going to bed is. in a few minutes. Adam, rest assured, we've got hundreds of people yeah. not listening right now, and two or three that are. No, now, we have. Well, got... look, I've already said Maddie Cole's listening. She's just messaged in to say Brentwood is lovely if you're a footballer's wife, <laughs> but she's she wants to make a request for a guilty pleasure. 
Oh, what a does, song! Oh, does that mean a song? Oh, no, you see, Maddie. Well, we, uh, if you're requesting some sort of pleasure from Nick or myself, <laughs> then you know that's probably this isn't the place to air those thoughts. But if you want to request a song, sadly, we don't take requests. No, we can't the song take requests. Has to be prepared beforehand. And this is <laughs> we've got no idea what we're going to say. <laughs> Um, and literally the only thing we know about are the songs we've prepared. We don't know exactly don't anything else that's I don't think her happening. request was a song. Really? Yeah, she wants me in a tiger suit. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I said she played um, the Mother Wolf and she played Car the Snake in the Jungle Book, I neglected to mention that I played Shere Khan the Tiger. So does she want you to put the tiger suit on, come around her house and go, they're great, and she can pretend that's that you're the Tony the Tiger Frosty's advert? That's the dream. <laughs> But I don't think she wanted me to put the suit on, because if she remembers, certainly we did two weeks of this show. Yeah. The first week was kind of okay, but the second week, the costume had been in a bag sort of from the Saturday night to the, to the sort of uh, Monday evening. Yeah. They hadn't washed the costumes. It had mould on the inside. <laughs> it was like getting into some Stilton. <laughs> I was like... Luckily, I wasn't like a massive character because I was the bad guy. I sort of came on at the end, and that was it. But it was it stank. It was horrible. That is one it was sentence. Moldy. I never thought I would ever hear anyone say it was like getting into some Stilton. <laughs> Maddie says sweaty. Yes, that was well enough about us. Um, <laughs> when I think I may have said this on this program before, or maybe in a previous podcast that we've done, um, that when I worked in a hotel in Brighton, I won't name the hotel. Um, the, Grand Ocean. The, <laughs> thanks so much. <laughs> the uh, standard of living accommodation for entertainment staff was slightly poor, and there were mushrooms growing out of the carpet <laughs> in our hallway. That. And we had to hoover them up everywhere. Not traditional mushrooms like you'd expect, really weird sort of brown, flaky, rubbish mushrooms that were sort of... <laughs> rubbish mushrooms? Well, they weren't your sort of closed-cut button mushrooms you could put <laughs> on a salad, you know. They, you definitely didn't that want to eat That would be freakish if you were like... Well, the place is falling to bits, there's mould and fungus everywhere, but look at this lovely salad and beef wellington we've made. <laughs> yeah, because there was a cow sat in the corner as well. So you can buy the beef. <laughs> you don't have to pick everything from the corridor of the entertainment establishment. I, I just ate the walls every now and again, I was that strange, yeah. Did you? Seems, no. Seems a bit weird. I wasn't Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Oh, uh, Adam Ralph said, thank you for taking my request. Can I have Focus Hocus Pocus? Is that a song? I've no idea what he's talking about. Why no. has he said, thank you for taking my request? But we haven't taken his request. We haven't taken his request. Adam, you can request all you like. Go to bed. I'm wearing a tiger suit for Adam. That's the only request. <laughs> and I'm saying, they're great. Which... For Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> so both of them are slightly disappointed. <laughs> which is how we leave most people. That's what everyone who visits Brentwood is. <laughs> so... So here we are, it's London, it's Ignite Radio, it's We've Got No Idea What We're Going to Say. If you're listening and you're thinking, those two blokes are idiots, I want to tell them that they're idiots. One person that wants to tell you you're an idiot is my father. <laughs> and he's uh, messaged into the Do you mean Keith show. from Dartford? Keith from Dartford slash my father. Right. Um, has Don't happily... slash your father. <laughs> no, I didn't, just to clarify, I think Maddie thought I called her Madam. There's my friend Adam was messaging in about request and you were messaging in, so... It's a bit confusing. Right, OK. Um, anyway, back to Keith My dad said two vaguely interesting things related to what we've been talking about. Um, he's, he's <laughs> Vaguely interesting? I think you're playing fast and loose with the word Keith. <laughs> you haven't heard what he said yet. Go on, then. Um, first of all, he's uh, wished a get well message to a brother water rat, because myself and my dad belong to a showbiz charity organisation called the Grand Order of Water Rats. Not genetically a brother. No. Uh, Not jo genetically a rat? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Does he drink water? Yes. One out of three. <laughs> anyway, he's wished Johnny Dennis well, who's not been very well uh, recently, and he is the stadium announcer at all cricket grounds for England test matches. Right. So uh, he's not been able to do it recently, obviously, because he's been ill, but we'd like to wish so him So he's better. a stadium announcer. That must be difficult then to sort of make up for the crushing boredom in between <laughs> announcements. <laughs> he just reads That's probably why he's not well. He's like, I'm so bored. He I might as well be ill. <laughs> he reads out a naughty just, limerick just every now and again. something to um, do. The other thing relevant to the show that my dad wanted to say is... Keith from Dartford. Nick Murphy, idiot. <laughs> is that what he said? That's what he's put. So do you want to is respond to that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think saying Nick Murphy, idiot, means Nick Murphy, my son Ben is an idiot, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's sort of shorthand, it's our kind of... It's very reading between the lines, isn't it, there? What, what no, that's that? reading the words. <laughs> the actual words. 
<laughs> well, I can't believe the uh, <clears throat> opening 15 minutes of the show is almost passed. Don't be ridiculous. Well, it's round about this time that we were playing random songs, but they're not random anymore, are No, they? we've chosen... Are we choosing... Are we playing mine or yours? We're playing your, your chosen song. I think we should play my song first. This is your guilty pleasure song. I kind of need to introduce it a bit. Um, right. I started listening to this person's music. They were some of the first records I ever bought. I was in love with Kylie Minogue in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, as she's got older... How do you feel about her now? I... I I'd still like to spend a lot of time in her company. <laughs> I haven't bought any of her music most recently, but no? uh, have I did you have a wa- listen. Do you listen to her stuff recently? What's the most recent thing she's done? I can't even think of what she's done in the last few years. You know, years. there are listeners out there who will be able to correct us, but I've I've got absolutely no idea. She had well, a, we can't she correct had an album. us. We haven't said anything wrong. <laughs> we just said we don't know what it is. <laughs> that is a good point. It'd be able to give us the correct information because we don't know it. But since she did Can't Get You Out of My Head, and that was the pretty, the sort of last cool thing I can remember. But she's done a that lot. was quite a while ago. She had she about five years of, of releasing songs after that, and I can't well, remember the title. I know, she, of she, came very, she went very ill, didn't she? But um, Yeah, she did. Got To Be Certain was the first record I ever bought on a vinyl single. Right. And uh, that was her second song, After I Should Be So Lucky. I think this song that I'm going to play now was possibly her third song. It might be a little bit after that. Are we going back to Stock Aitken and Waterman days? Oh, yes, we are. I'm excited. And it's a cover version. I'd just like everyone out there to enjoy listening to this. <laughs> Well, guilty pleasure or not, that <laughs> was the lovely, from the 80s, Kylie Minogue and The Locomotion. So uh, how do you feel about that, Nick? I remember that quite well. I think um, that was definitely probably the time in my life when I listened to a bit more music. <laughs> but The Locomotion, that was a cover of someone else, wasn't it? I want to say Little Ava or someone oh, from the we, now 60s someone or could 70s. Correct us now, that yeah, if that's if wrong. wrong, I apologise. Little Someone, it wasn't Little Richard. <laughs> no, that would that's be a completely different bizarre. <laughs> Uh, Maddie Cole just messaged back into um, to our show to say that her duo partner, which I believe is sort of she does a she's a singer performer, I believe. Okay. Uh, her duo partner and I closed the show out with this song, the locomotion, the other day, mm. basically so that they didn't have to do an encore. They just <laughs> locomoted out of the door. I like it. I was nice going to say thanks for that message, Maddie. I was going to say anybody else listening to the show, if you've been affected by any of the issues raised by playing the song, the locomotion, <laughs> I have. then. Uh, uh, please message in and tell us how you feel about it but just message in the show generally there are so many ways find us on Facebook WGNI Lots find myself or Nick on Facebook and send us messages find us on Twitter at WGNI Radio and give us tweets and that gubbins and, uh, or you could email info at wgni.co.uk. But yeah, we had a little bit of a problem last week because uh, Ignite Radio changed their website address, but there's now two websites you can connect through to us, isn't you that can, right? Well, presumably nobody knows if they're not listening because we can't tell them. Yes, yeah, so you'll uh, have to be listening to know what Feel website. free to yeah. pass the website on to people. Igniteradio.de.nu. Or igniteradio.co.nr. Right. So a couple of ways. Don't and know why they changed that, but they have done. They have done, and you yeah. click on Listen Live, and then you hear us, and that's the way it works now. Kate Marson's messaged into the show. What she said? She's told us a funny story about what's happened to her this week. Can you read it out? Because I'd like to hear that funny story. <laughs> well, yes, I can, Ben, <laughs> yes. Um, she got asked by a policewoman with a police dog. Um, I think the police, woman, the police dog didn't ask her. Uh, <laughs> if she'd seen two men running past her workplace just this morning. Right. Uh, as they just jumped out the back of a lorry, so the policewoman suspected they were, that they were illegal immigrants. Oh, dear. And Kate points out that it's quite sad all that way in the back of a lorry, and they end up in Harlow. <laughs> but um, I don't know Harlow. I'm not sort of specifically attacking Harlow. That's just what Kate said. It was weird, because when all those riots happened a couple of years ago, people were attacking major cities. You were the only person that attacked Harlow, weren't you? <laughs> I know. Um, and they which was weird, because they, yeah, they just they sort of threw bits of clothing at me and I ran away. It was, it wasn't <laughs> That's the your problem, being the world's least hard man ever. I keep telling you, don't run away when people throw clothes. <laughs> I was going to say throw garbage at me, but they do that anywhere I go. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, don't forget, we want to hear your messages. The show wouldn't be the show without your regular messages coming in, and we can talk about you then, and we can say how lovely you are. <laughs> or we can say if we hate you, if we hate you. But well, Presumably we people we hate wouldn't message in, would they? I, I, well, maybe they would, just to sort of cause controversy Ooh, during the show. <laughs> yeah. I hope they don't. They might think, God, those two utter... 
pillocks they're on the radio i'm gonna mess with their heads i can tell you've resisted swearing and you did it well but you're allowed to swear i know but i just i just think let's you know it's still let's early on in down. the show first half of the show <laughs> let's, let's give it somewhere let's, to go let's don't go further than a tosser that's what i always say <laughs> Right. Brilliant. Big hello to Erica Orsagova, who's listening to the show. That's a non-English name, is it? <laughs> yes. I want to say, and she'll probably correct me if I'm wrong, she's Slovakian. I hope that I've got that right. And uh, she's a very good chess player as well. So. Right, OK. Yeah. She works at the Russell Hotel. Maybe I'm giving too much information. Maybe I <laughs> and should... And she lives at this postcode. <laughs> I've got a surveillance give any more. man outside. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll shut up about Erica now. <laughs> Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, we've had quite a long message on Facebook. Right. I'm going to read this out. Go for it. Oh, little Ava would be correct, Maddie says. Oh, OK. Oh, good. I'm glad that I wasn't wrong <laughs> in that knowledge. No, I am quite pleased. This message is from one of your teachers. I what? seem to remember you having a watch which had Kylie Minogue on the face of it when you were 11 <laughs> and how upset your mother was when someone at Dartford Grammar School stole your watch. <laughs> Because you were this in, is absolutely I'm not, brilliant. I'm sort Breaking of, news. I'm sort of censoring some of this message as I'm reading it. It wasn't until many years later that everyone else decided Kylie was talented. So you were a real talent spotter at a very <laughs> early age. That's actually <laughs> no, awesome. No, I'd like to think of you just go with the most populist, sweetie pop crap. <laughs> <laughs> and that when, they fight, when the singer actually realises that they could be good, you sort of slightly lose interest and everyone else thinks they're better. That isn't. That is actually completely true. So hang on. Let's just go back over this story. You had a watch with <laughs> Kylie on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember at the time. How did I, you not get beaten I every got, single minute of every day? I got the piss taken out of me for owning that watch, and I still wore it proudly. And then one day in the games lesson, we left our clothes in the changing room. It wasn't there when I came back. Ah, oh, I remember um, having a really nice ruler. That someone stole. Did you and the best stick thing it round your wrist and pretend it was a what? No. <laughs> the best thing was the guy I know the guy who stole it, because about a week later he was in class using it and I went, That's my ruler and he went, No, I just saw yours and so bought one. I liked it so much I bought one just like it. But it had like the same like, I remember using it in like a painting class one day and I'd, I'd like got spots of paint on it I could see ah. the spots of paint that I'd put on it I'm like if you're going to steal something from me don't use it like about 10 feet away from what me what a bastard yeah I remember having and this was at um, infant school I think I had a Transformers watch ah you see now you that's could, cool you could take the face off and it just made a little robot with two arms and two legs and then I lost that and then exactly the same thing happened and there was a kid wearing the same watch and um, I remember going to his class and the teacher saying, are you sure this is your watch? Because if you're accusing him of taking it, it's quite serious. And I was like, it's definitely my watch. But I was in the right and he had to give it back and he massively got into trouble. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm quite pleased. And I'm, I'm sure he's probably turned to a life of crime as a result of it. <laughs> and uh, he's Well, currently as a result of stealing your pleasure. watch, he's turned to a life of crime. So I've inspired him. <laughs> For his criminal activity. Basically, you put put it out there. He was a nice, mm. honest, yeah. sort of law-abiding citizen. I framed citizen. him for that theft. <laughs> and look at him now at Her Majesty's pleasure. <laughs> I've no, I don't even uh, remember the guy's name. I'm just completely I've had a really, rubbing. really weird request from um, Ewan Shears, who I mentioned earlier. He clearly is listening to the show. Yeah. He's asked if, and I, I presume it's both of us, we could please speak with an Australian accent for the next five minutes. <laughs> do you think we for could do it? We can certainly do it for a little while. I don't know, five minutes would be appropriate. Let's if someone tunes in at the time, they'll be like, what's happened to Ben and Nick? Okay, right, now well, we are on. supposed to be actors, so we should be able to do a passable Australian accent. Right, well, so for the next couple of minutes, this is, we've got no idea what we're going to say, down under. So, hello there, mate. All right? Yeah, not bad, mate. How's it going? <laughs> Are we kind of a bit like a poor man's version of that Foster's advert with those two blokes talking in front I, of a comedy show? I think show? so. So, what you need to do is get out of the banana... banana I can't say banana hammock. Right. Banana hammock. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, don't rub the sun cream on his back too much, mate. That's what they <laughs> do in the advert. won't do that, mate. I'll throw a few shrimps on the barbie and say something about I was trying Foster's. to kind of a avoid saying too many of the kind of stereotype Stereotypical Aussie things like, like shrimp on the barbie. 
Crocodile Dundee, but, mate. Uh, yeah, Barbie. There, I don't know what I was saying with that. <laughs> How I think I'll just go a bit more low like this. How kind of... doll sold in America, Barbie? Because they must go crazy with that stuff. No, they just say Barbie, mate. It's just like, it's not that big a deal. Right, so this is Ignite so, Radio. We've got no idea what we're going to say down under. Yeah. And uh, I hope this is satisfying What are you doing you down and... under? <laughs> Don't answer that one, mate. I can see what you're doing. You've still got no clothes on. <laughs> um, I think that's more than enough of that for now. Yes, I think it wasn't five minutes, but that's enough. Um, um, I've just had a message on Facebook and I've slightly upset and he just gone away from the page to tell me exactly what it said. Ah, there it is. Um, from the lovely Danielle Pasquale. No Which way. says, Hi, Benny boy, listening to your lovely radio show. God, I so remember those mushrooms. Because <laughs> <laughs> she did work at the same hotel. she's still high from taking them. <laughs> I'm sure I have photographic evidence of that. So funny. Do you remember we had the maintenance guy put a lock on the toilet door so the waiters couldn't poo on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that <laughs> well, at all. That's something. How, why? Why would they have done that? We well, had one of the waiters from the restaurant, because I lived, I worked for a similar hotel, for the same hotel chain yeah. in Blackpool, Metropole. the Grand Metropole. Yeah. I was going to say the name <laughs> of it. I'm not that upset. And one of the waiters from them, who I would say was quite a rough bloke from Blackpool, put his fist through our wall. <laughs> Right. Almost as bad as pooing on your toilet floor. <laughs> Almost. But not um, the same. I'd like, Danielle, to just clarify exactly what happened with that story, yeah. because clearly it's quite a while ago, about 12 years ago, and I've forgotten what happened. We've moved on a little bit, but actually there's been a couple of uh, watch messages from two different people, so I think we need to mention some watch of those. Related? Oh, what, Kylie watch Vino related? Watch related. Well, not well, Kylie Vino, related, but watch there. related. You were talking about your fantastically cool <laughs> Kylie Minogue <laughs> watch. And then the Transformers one kind of got me out of that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it did, actually, because I kind of want one. Um, <laughs> Um, tell us, tell us these messages. Uh, Kate has messaged in again to say that Kate she Marson. had a, Kate Marson had a mini mouse watch which got stolen in primary school. Oh, a lot of people have had think, watch trauma stealing. Yeah, I think it's a case of if you have a nice watch, people nick it. <laughs> And um, Maddie Cole, who obviously has featured uh, quite highly in this show so far, <laughs> yeah. she had a Dick Tracy watch, which Ooh, uh, you cool. could press a button on it, and it said, calling Dick Tracy. And did you try and stop it from it's saying Tracy? It's a bit weird, because surely you... Oh, I suppose the watch, if you're pretending you're Dick Tracy and the watch is then someone else calling you. I was going to say, if you were trying to speak to Dick Tracy on your watch, <laughs> you could just say calling Dick Tracy. Um, have I gone a bit, have I said Dick I Tracy too you've much? You've analysed it too much, but... I really never got into Dick Tracy. Like, there was no, a Warren Beatty film and I still didn't like that. It was, it's kind of had a sort of cool look to it. I remember he had a long yellow trench coat. It was kind of weirdly it? comic-y, wasn't it? Comic yeah, it was booklet. a bit Sin City-like, but ahead of yeah. that time. It was sort of late 80s, early 90s, wasn't it? I think. A bit bizarre. Wasn't Madonna in it? Yes, no, I think you're completely right about right. that. So well done with she your knowledge. She doesn't pick good films no. <laughs> to do. <laughs> she really doesn't. Um, upsettingly, the amount of time has passed where I think Nick Murphy has to introduce the song that he's chosen for today's oh, radio goodness. show. Oh, goodness. Do you know, I'm really struggling to remember what it was I chose. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you could show me our uh, thing. Of course, yes. Well, here we go. This is, uh, if we thought that Kylie was bad, um, I <laughs> really think you should prepare a, yourself for a this. A guilty pleasure. A guilty pleasure. I li li actually listened to this again about a year ago <laughs> and really laughed. You should it be is, guilty with it. It is guilty pleasure. Um, famous song from the TV show, Spitting Image. <laughs> it's the chicken song. There we go then, that was the infamous chicken song. I'm feeling guilty. <laughs> I'm feeling guilty, it wasn't even my choice. <laughs> um, during that song though, we had a nice message from Nikos Kiriakou, who I've worked with many times, and he Is said... Is it not Kiriakou? Well, I'm not... I would always said it was Kiriakou. Well, let's get Nikos to... Nikos, to actually, would you let us know uh, whether it's Kiriakou or Kiriakou? We'd like to know the correct pronunciation so we don't get your name wrong on the air like I may have done, in which case I apologise profusely. Um... But uh, Nico said, ah, but do you remember the B-side to this single? And I think for decency reasons, can we say it? Well, I will just mention the title it of it. It's, it's quite disparaging people from another continent. But I have to mention it also because Maddie Cole also uh, mentioned um, the B-side. She said, don't play the B-side. So I think we'll just, we will tell you the name of the B-side. <laughs> um, apparently Maddie's dad loved it, but it was called I'd Never Met a Nice South African. <laughs> Which, um, obviously, I've met several South Africans and they're all lovely. No, um, also, that person obviously hadn't met Nelson Mandela. Is he nice? Well, he's quite nice, isn't he? You don't know him. No, I don't. Have you ever met him? 
I will admit, I've assumed he's nice. Yeah. But I don't imagine a person gets to be where Nelson Mandela's got after having the life he's had without being a bit nice. Well, I imagine he's also been nasty to people. Well, I think there's evidence of that when he was younger. <laughs> Can we move away from this? I think <laughs> deep, serious politics is an area that me and you should never, ever st- stray into. <laughs> No, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. Uh, but thanks to Nikos for messaging in anyway. And I'd like to say I believe there may be some other people who've worked for the same company as myself and Nikos listening to this show tonight. And if you are, I'd like you to make yourselves known to us and then we can say hello and sort of generally get your name into our show as well. You and Shears has just messaged in to say B-side. That doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help anyone. <laughs> thanks, you Ewan. But thanks so much. Really um, helpful. Daniel Pasquale has put, I don't know why they used to poo on the floor. Maybe they did that to cover up the mushrooms. I think I'd rather there was a hallway full of mushrooms. You thought poo would be the worst thing to cover up (laughs) mushrooms. It's basically (laughs) fertiliser. Yeah, who knows? Who knows why waiters do what they do, you know? Now, uh, this might sound a bit harsh because obviously we we know several lovely ladies with famous dads. Yeah. Is this harsh to say? Go on, what are you going to say? Can, well, you can tell the na- by the name of the lovely Danny Pasquale. She, she must be related to, to a gentleman <laughs> who we actually interviewed for our uh, podcast. Yeah, Danny's dad, the legendary Joe Pasquale, will be appearing on a podcast near you very soon when we release Series 4 yeah. of our podcast. We've got no idea what we're going to say, which isn't so, this radio show, but it's similar. Danny, your dad's parrot pooed on Ben's back. <laughs> This show's become a lot more about poo than I thought, but we turned... That's actually not true. Your dad's parrot pooed on his back, and then he wiped it on Ben. <laughs> that that's, that's, sorry, I was wrong to start with that. Actually Hang on, correct. I feel like we need to clarify, because it does sound a strange story. We turned up to do the podcast at Joe Pasquale's house. He has a pet parrot that is quite awesome and was sitting on his shoulder I'm as he sure answered the door. I'm sure we've told this story before. The parrot had shat down his back. He didn't realise. I hugged him to say hello and put my hand in parrot shit. <laughs> so, you know... I'd, it was slightly strange at the time, but we all moved on and got through it. Keith from Dartford's messaged in. Has he? <laughs> yes. Has He's messaged in, in purely in capitals, which he doesn't... I don't know if he realises that in the internet world... Capitals means he's shouting. It, <laughs> I never think of that, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, if you write right. capitals, it means you're shouting. That's the whole purpose of but it. But he wants to know who you and Shears is and says, my name is Garden Shears. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you are free in Margate, come along and see the comedy show. It's more of this sort of stuff. It's a lot better. <laughs> No, 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 it's, it's, about it's the same not. As that. I haven't seen it. I'm still big <laughs> Actually, now you've said that, it does give me a chance to say we've got two more weeks left of the Get Happy Show, Summer Variety Spectacular yep. in Margate. If you're anywhere near the Kent area, come and see us Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 2.30 and 7. Absolutely. And it's uh, comedy, music and dancing, something for all the family. You're coming to see it soon, aren't I you? am. We're coming on the 15th with the lovely Nicole and C. Well, that's going to be nice for you. <laughs> yes, it is. It's going to be terrible for until her. We, to sit until with you. we get in to the theatre and then we have to see you <laughs> but I'm like, looking forward to seeing lovely people like um, the lovely Victoria Yellop of course who will be there and uh, Floss is going to be there who was an actual real name I've forgotten is Victoria uh, Scott Victoria yeah. Scott obviously yeah. lovely as well yeah and our guest stars in the show Victoria Yellop violinist uh, Victoria Scott songstress yeah and um, obviously there's your other comedy duo and um, unfortunately I'll have to see your dad as well <laughs> Yes, you will, but <clears throat> that's just a consequence, really. Um, one thing we haven't talked about today, and it's probably appropriate, certainly to us and I guess many people listening, but there was a new actor revealed of a popular TV oh, show last night. Oh, that's exciting. The exciting news of the new Doctor Who. I've got to say, I was excited. You were slightly outraged because it was an actor who'd appeared prominently yeah. in an episode not too many years ago, and you're kind of not sure if that will work. He appeared prominently in a David Tennant episode, and I think that really sort of disqualified him from being the next Doctor. But, that said, I do think he'll be a very good Doctor. Of course, Peter Capaldi, star of The Thick of It. Everyone's talking about him now. I quite yeah. like the fact that Matt Smith was controversial because he was one of the youngest actors ever to be cast as the youngest Doctor. Youngest and unknown at the time he, w- he became the Doctor. Yeah, completely. And uh, this time, they've gone for someone with a bit more of a higher about, profile. What, 25 years older than Matt Smith yeah, was. He's when he 50, I read he's 55 now. Yeah. Uh, so he, is, so yeah. he might be a bit more than that. He's 30, yeah. Well, Matt Smith was 26, but he's 30 yeah. now, apparently. But uh, yeah, so that's quite interesting to see what they do with it. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I've really enjoyed Doctor Who since they brought it back with Christopher Eccleston. And uh, when they 
just about got rid of it in the 90s, Sylvester McCoy did pantomime with my dad and came to my football club awards night and handed out awards. Oh, that's not good. Well, it, it was good at the time. We liked it. He was Doctor Who. <laughs> Why would it not be good for Doctor Who to give you your award in case he nicked it and went in the TARDIS? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I was actually upsettingly saying that was not good because uh, Maddie Cole said she's lost our connection. Well, that isn't good, is it? No. No one one likes to hear that. Oh, and also, oh, oh, a couple of people have lost their connection, which is worrying me slightly. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologise if you've lost your connection. I hope you haven't. Please try and get it back. Yeah. Um, But if you've lost your connection, you can't hear us asking you to get it back. No. You're not going to try as hard, I guess. Uh, but, yes, it's igniteradio.co.nr, and then you click Listen Live. Or alternatively, if you're having problems there, igniteradio.de.nu. Don't ask us why it's those web addresses. We didn't choose them. No, but they're working. Yep, and this is... We've got no idea what we're going to say. We haven't known anything that's going to happen in this show. It's no, it's been, washed over us. been crazy. Thanks, as ever, for your messages so far. It's a pleasure to know you guys are out there. So, Sylvester McCoy, did did he sort of meet your uh, sort of ex- your expectations? Why am I correct? N- Nikos Kyriakou. Oh, Kyriakou. Kyriakou. Then I yeah. profusely apologise, Nikos, for like getting it wrong on I, several occasions. I don't occasions. think I ever worked with Nikos. I worked with his sister once. Oh, OK, yeah. I've worked with Nikos many times, and we went through a whole spate of meeting each other at the offices and pretending to hate each other. Right. Or saying, "Are oh, you again? Why are you here? Can I, I've seen enough of you now." That's weird. I say his pretending. Hates, no, she doesn't. Oh, I say I pretending. Know. He always looked quite genuine. <laughs> Actually, I lie. I think I did work once with Nikos. Okay. We worked with a. Uh, it was like an animatronic heads were used in the. It was the. Um, Zingzillas. Zing well yeah, done. the Zingzillas. And uh, the animatronic head of the lead singer failed, so he couldn't. <laughs> it was really badly designed because if the if the mouth wasn't open, the, the person inside couldn't see. Yeah. So there's a whole dance routine. They're singing on stage in front of like twenty thousand people at this massive thing. <laughs> I think it was in Leicester, and the uh, the the mouth closed absolutely solidly shut. <laughs> so the lead singer couldn't do any of the stuff he's supposed to do, and all the singing was still coming out while his mouth was completely that probably closed. Probably hampered his performance somewhat. It, it was upset. <laughs> I'd like to uh, thank Nikos Kiriakou. I've, I'm confused about his name now. I'm worried about it. Kiriakou. Kiriakou. I've yeah, gone too just, much the other you, way. You, you were Kiriakou, weren't you? So it's you just the of, emphasis. You emphasise the ku, the k and the ku. The kiri. And, but the emphasis is on the ass. It's Kiriakou. Yeah, I was thinking of Kiri Takanua too much, clearly. Uh, uh, why were you thinking of Kiri Takanua? Because that's really, three different words. I really have kiri no idea. Kiri Takanua. Yeah, but the world... It's probably in, Kanawa as well. The is, world in unions. Good, everyone calls him. Everyone Rugby calls him Kanawa, but it's world probably Cup. Kanawa. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to say about Nikos is he came to my... I celebrated working for 10 years for the costume character company and had a night out in London. And um, he came along and had some alcoholic beverages with me that evening, which yes, was most pleasurable. That's when I was there. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying you weren't there. I'm just saying he was. <laughs> <laughs> well done, yeah. Nikos, for being there. Anybody else that's ever worked for the popular costume character company, get in touch. Are you listening? Um, oh, that's interesting. Nikos is quite knowledgeable about all things... Um, Doctor Who-ish and sci-fi and TV and movies, and he said Colin Baker appeared in Doctor Who before he was the Doctor, so there is a precedent. There is a precedent. And now, you see, I'd just spoken to Ben earlier, because obviously the actress who played Martha Jones certainly appeared in Doctor Who before, but it was quite a small character. I think she only had a few lines. Yeah, sure, sure. And she came in as the character's cousin, but obviously um, Peter Capaldi was quite a... Uh, a main character in his episode. Yeah, he was. It was but, all about him. Yeah, you see, as you said, if Colin Baker had appeared in it before he was the Doctor, then that does slightly num- nullify my argument. And, of course, John Pertwee appeared as Wurzel Gummidge. So there's been a photo of you sent in by Kate Marson. Kate it's Marson a very strange photo. photo. Obviously, um, <laughs> not many people out there are going to be able to share it with us. Probably I'll have to put it on my Facebook now because of this. We I can put it on the WGNI on... Facebook page. Let's do that because where on earth was that photo taken? <laughs> I don't recognise anything from it. It's oh. just me in glasses far too close, aren't I'll try and uh, put it onto the Facebook page. Do you want to talk while I'm going to do this? <laughs> Are you saying you can't multitask and do things at the same exactly time? That's exactly what do I'm you know saying. What? Don't do that just yet because it's almost time for another song. Okay. And you can do it while the song's on. But I think we should really take some time to introduce this song because it's very dear to both our hearts. Ah, oh, yes. Now then. See, I wouldn't actually yeah, call this it. guilty pleasure because I'm quite proud that I like this. That t- <laughs> to me, 
this is not one of, like the first two songs we played, the Kylie Locomotion and the Chicken song. Yeah. They're things that you wouldn't genuinely, uh, generally sort of admit to liking. <clears throat> yeah, you're absolutely right. I think right. this one is, is good to admit you're liking, but it does have a sort of special, special sort of uh, meaning for us, I think. It really does. And, and, and those people that know us will understand why we've chosen this song. I think we can talk about it more afterwards, but here from the musical episode of Scrubs, which I believe appeared in series six, is that right? I think you're probably right. It's a lovely song called Guy Love. Guy Love. Really? Let's face the facts about me and you. A love unspecified. It's, it's Guy Love between... No hands. <laughs> so that was the beautiful guy love from Scrubs, guy love. which is a, a kind of appropriate for us, I guess. I like it? to think so. Um, we mean, never hug that much, though, that like JD and Turk do in Scrubs. No, perhaps not as much, but we do hug. Probably more than most guys. There are a lot of people that have said we act like a married couple. We are quite often... Uh, because we don't sleep with each other. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like most married couples. Um, no, it's, it's kind of weird because I guess like uh, I've, had, I've sort of gone out with people and they've always got, referred to you as, say, my other girlfriend and stuff <laughs> like that. Or um, Obviously, that Rosalind really Blessed has written a play about us where the characters we play, it's kind of based on us, but not. Yeah. But the character kind that I romance. play actually is in love with you in real life. It's all, it's all yeah. Very it's all bromantic. Good. Bromantic. I like to think so. The love's there and we're not afraid to admit it. Yeah, but man. in a totally manly way. <laughs> um, we've had an interesting message in from, uh, I believe it's the theatre in Margate where I'm working, Winter Gardens Theatre, on their Facebook. They've said, do you know Janet Fielding, who was a Doctor Who assistant many years ago, is now involved with saving an old theatre near where you're doing your summer show, the Pavilion Theatre in Ramsgate? So uh, that's vaguely interesting, isn't it, if you're a Doctor Who follower? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it Nothing is. about Ramsgate is interesting. Why am I just being offensive to areas of London? That's... I really don't know. No, I don't know Ramsgate either. But, um, yeah, it's just... Um... Why are you saying you're being offensive to areas of London? Because Ramsgate's Harlow? not in London. Harlow's uh, not in London. South, southern England. Harlow's in Essex. <laughs> Essex. Ramsgate's in the thousand. Essex area. is kind of London, isn't it? It's like well, it, greater if, London. If you like to get things wrong, then yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how is Nikos Kiriakou? <laughs> See, like an old married couple <laughs> bitching our way through our lives. We will have makeup sex later. Then, so, so. <laughs> what is that where we like have sex with items of makeup? That's yes. Good. <laughs> Any more messages from friends of the show? I've oh. got to say, I know that uh, Alex Caffet Zoglu, regular listener to the show, is listening and is said it, hello. Has he messaged? He did on Twitter earlier. Has Alex Caffet Zoglu? Is he possibly the only person who's messaged every single show we've done? I think he's the only person whose name I've got right every single time. I don't know him, and he's messaged every show. People I know don't listen all the time. <laughs> thanks, Alex. Yeah, thanks for being a regular listener to the show. Spread the WGN I love. That's what I say. Absolutely, let's do it. I'm quite excited. What's just reminded me of a strange... Uh, I've had a strange uh, train of thought there. Alex Caffert Zogley works in Cromer in Norfolk. I recently saw That's the tra- a strange, strange train of thought. <laughs> it really is. I recently saw the trailer of the new Alan Partridge movie, Alpha Papa, and uh, there is a scene filmed on the pier in Cromer in Norfolk. Cause oh, nice, it's, nice. It's all set in Norfolk area. Didn't they have the premiere of that show in, North, in, in Norwich? Norwich? Yeah, absolutely awesome. So, That's uh, quite good. I did um, post, by the way, that you know we said that Kate Marson um, mess- posted the so photo, photo of you, you and I posted it onto our uh, Facebook page, the WGNI Facebook page. So if you search search on Facebook for WGNI, you can you'll see. see the photo. If you want to see a photo of me slightly too close up and has somehow managed to make it look as if I'm doing one of those cheesy smiles with a twinkle coming out of your mouth, then that was a good photo <laughs> from Kate Marson. So thanks for that. Uh, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah. I'm very sorry to see that Maddie Cole can't get back listening to the website. I'm very upset. Well, Maddie Cole is going to be forever distraught about what happened in about the last 15 minutes that she's missed. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, do you think she'd ever want to come onto the show as a guest? She might. Well, let's ask her. Yeah. If there's anybody listening who'd like to come onto this show as a guest, then uh, let us know and we'll see what we can do. But, you know, we only do it every fortnight, so it can't happen all the time. 
but still, <laughs> no, it can happen at least once a fortnight. <laughs> if you want to like guess with us every single day, you're going to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone out there that wants to guest with us every single day. Um, Alex Caffet-Sogley has messaged in and said he hadn't messaged today, but he is listening. Right, so he's sort of, kind of, there's a weird paradox there. He's yeah. messaged in to say he hasn't messaged. <laughs> I think somehow the world has ended now because <laughs> of that. Oh, that's mildly upsetting. Um, I've got to say, it's flown by so far. We've only got seven minutes for this broadcast left. That's ridiculous. We only started it three minutes ago. I think there's people out there who will testify that that is wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong before. I'll never be wrong again. <laughs> One thing we haven't mentioned is the wonderful shows at the Zoo Lates that we've been doing that finished this Friday. Regular fans of our Impro Comedy yeah. Group, Shotgun Impro, will know we've been in London Zoo weekly throughout the summer at their fabulous Zoo Lates events, and it came to a close, sadly, last Friday. Um... I was only able to do six out of our nine shows due to my summer season starting. Nick was a stalwart of Shotgun Impro, yeah. organised the whole darn thing and, uh, and was there to the bitter That's end. That's one of the bonuses of organising it, though. You can cast yourself in every show. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I was thinking, you know, so when directors and stuff put themselves in things, I think, well, that, that helps because you're the director. You, you can't kind of think, fair enough, don't you? Yeah. No, you think, what a bastard. <laughs> But, yeah, well, I uh, think that. But, you, you shouldn't <laughs> think that. but no, once again, it was a completely pleasurable experience. Yeah, just like to thank everybody at London Zoo for making it our third year there, and it was another success. I'd like to thanks say. to the fabulous Abby, Abby Gerard for being events coordinator, previous listener to the show, and uh, for booking us again. That yeah. was wonderful. And thanks, yeah, to all the team. It's been completely pleasurable. Yeah, it has been awesome. And what was nice for Shotgun now is we've kind of evolved as a group. We've got some new members, and look out for we've got shows in London Bridge in the autumn, haven't we? We have got shows. Can you remember the dates? I think I'd I've like got the to flyers. say I can remember the dates, uh, but I can't. I know it's October. Just give me now. one second. I'm going to have to go away from the mic. Oh, now being the Impro legend that I am, can I cope with Nick not being here for five seconds? Yes, I can. I've coped. He's I'm come back. back with a shotgun Impro fly. <laughs> I had to reach the other side of the small room. September, October, and November. We're in London Bridge, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we're on Tuesday, the 24th of September yeah. at the put, Miller Pub in London Bridge. Put it in your diary. Road. Tuesday, the 15th of October. Put that in your diary. And Tuesday, the 19th of November. Put that in your diary. Scrub it out because you don't want to go to all three and then feel guilty and put it back again. Yeah, you? and then come to all three. Yeah, and uh, reasonable rate, £7.50 a ticket. £10 ticket, £7.50 concessions. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be good if I knew the prices before <laughs> I read them out. On the 8 o'clock start and it's about a two-hour show. So and it's it lots of fun. Yeah, definitely. And it's kind of like our radio show, but with other people. And, not and funnier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, slightly strangely, um, bearing in mind friend to the show and all that gubbins, and she's just put a photo of me online, Kate Marston has just added me as a friend on Facebook. She did, she messaged me to say that you're not on her Facebook. How has this happened? Well, I am now, so somehow, due to the strangenesses of the internet and not being friends, we now are friends. Well, there you go. That's it's nice. a friendly this, world. This programme's brought people together, hasn't it? <laughs> Um, Daniel Pasquale has liked my photo now. That, uh, the one on, fa- on WGNI? Yes, absolutely. There you go. On WGNI. I should have tagged you in it, really. That would have been sensible. I'll well, try and do that now. I already know that I'm on it, so <laughs> don't, don't worry. It's not going to suddenly surprise me. I've tagged you. It's all all right. <laughs> Is there anything else going on in the world today that has upset you, aroused you, made you want to talk about it? Today? I, well, you know me. I don't tend to sort of... Hello, what's going on in the I world? I know something that's upset you recently. Oh, go on, you're going to mention it, it's going to upset me. You've had to book a trip a long way away, haven't you? <sighs> yes, I'm going to Aberdeen <laughs> tomorrow. Nick, and we won't say the job he's doing, but he's had to book a trip that he was expecting to maybe not be very far away and has found out it's in Aberdeen. Yeah, I was told that I probably wouldn't have to go out of London, maybe Peterborough at the <laughs> maximum, and my first, my first session is in Aberdeen. Yeah. Now... All you can say about Aberdeen is it's not as far as Inverness. That's the best thing about I, it. What I can say about Aberdeen is I remember the brilliance of that song by Eiffel 65 in the late 90s, Turn mm. of the Millennium, mm. coming out called Blue. Mm. And it went, I'm blue, da ba dee da ba die da ba dee da ba die And me and my mates Good decided lyrics. it sounded like, in Aberdeen I will die. So and when I'm you listen to it, it really does. I will die in Aberdeen, I will die in Aberdeen, I will die in Aberdeen. So will just make sure Aberdeen, that doesn't come true Aberdeen, this weekend. Aberdeen, right? Stop it now. Start it now. Aberdeen, I will die. Stop it now forever. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was a good song, wasn't it? A bit yes. repetitive. 
Yeah, but it was, had nice music. There's a song out at the minute that's very repetitive that regular friend of the show, Nicole C, likes, which goes, I want your body, everybody wants your body, so let's jack. And it just repeats that over and over again. And That's you know, not a song. You know that's how a I've, rhyme. That's not even a rhyme. It's a tosser's song. According to you and a lot of other people who are all wrong, I've got questionable taste in music, right? Even I hate that song. <laughs> so, oh, In that case, I like it. Um, <laughs> there was, what else was there that was weird that's happened to me? I was about to say... You and looked I in the on. mirror and saw your face? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Sorry, that was unnecessarily harsh, but I've enjoyed it. Yeah, my flatmate's um, moving out, so I'm on the search for a new flatmate. If anybody knows of anybody looking for a place to live in London, go and join us at the WGNI studio. Absolutely, and all the better if you're female and attractive. Well, that's going to make them rush in, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to narrow down your search field, <laughs> I think. Um, sadly, we've only got about a minute and a half left. I think Don't be ridiculous. A lot of people have been in, the tu- in touch with the show tonight that we should thank for being here. Right, who did we have in the show? We had Maddie Cole. Maddie Cole. to start with her Tony the Tiger rambling. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything to do with Tony the Tiger. <laughs> She's just got a fetish with me in a tiger costume. We've had Danielle Pasquale get in touch. You want to see her in a snake costume? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Danielle Pasquale lamented with me about the mushrooms. She did. Uh, Adam Ralph lamented about our intro music. Yeah, and uh, Alex Caffert Zoglu said he wasn't listening and he hadn't messaged in, but he messaged in to tell us. Well, and, uh, paradox. Kate Marson sent in silly photos of you. And Nikos Kiriakou has been in touch with the show, and he's, he's very lately been in touch with the show and said, I don't think you've plugged your own work enough. Uh, <laughs> which I'm taking that to be an ironic comment, so thanks for that, Nikos. Uh, much appreciated. Cara Jenkins sent us a message before the show, which was a photo of her screwing up her face. Mm, it's very attractive. Despite that, I can tell she's attractive. Erica Orsagova messaged in. Yeah, she had a non-English name. <laughs> um, anyone else? Can Kate Mars. We've talked about her yeah. in the photos. If we've left anybody out, something up. Oh, you and Shears. Oh, you and Shears. And the Australian and f- shenanigans. And Shears. No. And, um, and um, oh. Fran from Dartford, Keith from Dartford, people in Margate, my old teacher who found out about my kind. That <laughs> was my the favourite bit of the <laughs> That's show. That's brought back some slightly painful memories. Uh. But, you know. One day we all have to come to terms. What's with even funny is that you've got an old teacher on your Facebook. That's I really have. I would never do that. Some of my teachers I had a crush on at school, and some of the women. Was that one that messaged you? Just Maybe there? I'm not going to go into it right go now. Go on. <laughs> it's sadly time for us to get no! to the end of the show, and as ever, over to Nick Murphy to sum <laughs> up. But thanks to you all, I love you all. Well, there you go. Thank you very much to Ben Simmons and to everyone at Ignite Radio. But thank you most of all to you for listening to us. From myself, Nick Murphy, and for Ben Simmons, well, thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Bye-bye. Bye bye.